Hello. So we're back with our square and triangular waveform generator. Uh, we have analyzed the circuit to come up with expressions for V1 and V2 as functions of time. And so I've rewritten these. Uh, again, V1 is a square wave uh, which oscillates between positive and negative saturation voltage, Vsat. And V2 is a triangular wave which oscillates between positive and negative uh, Vt, where Vt again is equal to uh, Vsat, the saturation voltage, times the ratio of R1 to R2, the two resistors within the non inverting Smith trigger. And now we are going to uh, find out the period of oscillation or the frequency of oscillation. Uh, which again is going to be the same for both uh, the triangular wave and the square wave. We have oscillation t, and again t is 1 over f. So once we have one, we can figure out the other. And notice I have drawn in my graphs on the right hand side uh, t1 as being equal to the, the point from the, from the start point of zero uh, to the point where the circuit switches state. That's t1. Uh, which is half a period, and then uh, when the circuit switches state again, back to its original state, uh, that comprises one period. So it will be one square wave, or in the case of the triangular, uh, one negative slope plus all the way to the end of the positive slope. Uh, so, first thing that we're going to do is find the value of T1, which we can do uh, using the equations we have come up with, and then we know that the period it's just going to be equal to 2 times T1 because we're going to have uh, symmetrical uh, positive and negative slopes uh, duration. So uh, if I take, for example, I will take either one of them, but let's imagine I take my first equation here for V2. Uh, this is the equation for V2 within the first half period from 0 to T1 is equal to negative V sat over RC times T plus VT. And we know that for t equals uh, t1 minus, the value of that expression, the value of v2, is equal to negative vt. So I can say that at t equals t1, the value of v2 at t1, which is equal per the first equation to negative v sat over rc times t1 plus vt, we know that that value is going to be equal to, that's this point over here, so it's equal to negative Vt. And now I can solve for T1, and I will have that um, Vsat over Rc times T1 is equal to 2 times Vt. And therefore my T1 is going to be equal to uh, 2 Vt Rc divided by Vsat. If I wanted to simplify this further, I can note that Vt is equal to R1 over R2 times Vsat. Um, and I can, since R2 is equal to K times R1 in my figure, I can simplify that expression, noting that uh, Vt is equal to R1 over R2 times Vsat. And it's equal to, since R2 is K times R1 per the figure, I can also express this as V sat divided by K, where my T1 now becomes equal to uh, 2 times V sat divided by K times RC divided by V sat. My saturation voltages in the numerator and denominator are going to cancel out. And so I'm left with that expression. My period then is equal to 2 times T1, so it's 4RC divided by K. Or equivalently, my frequency is 1 over the period, so K divided by 4 times RC. And so basically what this tells us is that now we can um, use this circuit, and by selecting appropriate values for resistors and capacitor, we can uh, generate a square wave or a triangular wave uh, with a given amplitude and a given period or given frequency of oscillation. There is a couple of design considerations that we need to keep into uh, keep in mind. One is, as, as we previously saw, is that uh, notice that the voltage across the capacitor 
uh, is switching from positive to negative, and so we will want to have a, a non-polarized capacitor. for our circuit. And uh, the second thing is notice that even though our first op-amp is operating between the positive and negative saturation regions, our second op-amp, which is part of an integrator circuit, is operating in the linear region. And so in order to be able to integrate the signal to function as an integrator, uh, we need to ensure that that op-amp is operating in the linear region of operation. So. Um, integrator requires that the absolute value of V2 needs to be less than or equal to the saturation voltage. Now we have seen that V2 um, basically oscillates between positive Vt and negative Vt. Its maximum value in terms of, in absolute terms, is going to be equal to Vt. And so what we want is that Vt, in other words, be less than or equal to the saturation voltage uh, for the op-amp and Vt, uh, we've come up with an expression for it already, is equal to R1 over R2 times Vsat or uh, Vsat over K. It means Vsat divided by K needs to be less than or equal to Vsat, which basically means K needs to be greater than or equal to 1. So that's an important design consideration. And all that means if we look at the figure, uh, is that if k is greater than or equal to 1, it means that R2 uh, needs to be greater than or equal to resistor R1 in our inverting Schmidt trigger. Uh, so important design considerations. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at an example, how we will go about designing uh, a circuit to produce a square wave or a triangular wave of a given period and a given amplitude. Thank you.